and gentlemen, I'm so excited to be here with you all today. There's an old Chinese curse that says, may you live in interesting times. And let's be honest, if you're reading the newspaper these days, we are certainly living in interesting <coughs> times. For many of us in this room, these are times that have drawn into focus what we think, what we believe, and what we will fight for. But while I have the luxury of standing in front of you, trying not to trip on my shoes, um, the communities that I work with face far more daunting challenges. Being a refugee in the 21st century is knowing that while we've come so far when it comes to culture, medicine, technology, we have so far to go where it comes to how we treat our fellow man. Being an asylee in the 21st century is realizing that being true to who you are and who you love can put your life at risk. And being a victim of human trafficking in the 21st century is realizing that slavery isn't just a story from the history books. Like so many others, I remember staring at that photo of that little boy, Alan Kurdi, whose body was washed up on the shores of Greece as his family fled conflict. I remember thinking with futility that there's simply nothing that I can do. And indeed, it is too late for Alan Kurdi. And as xenophobia pushes more countries to close their doors to refugees, it can feel like there's nothing that we can do. But being a refugee, asylee, or victim of human trafficking in the United States in the 21st century can mean a whole host of other things. It can mean a chance at a better life and a shot at the American dream. And that's where my organization and so many others come in. Named after the poet Emma Lazarus, whose words are on the Statue of Liberty, we offer culinary training and job placement services to the newest members of our community. We give them the opportunity to showcase their culinary heritage and join the tapestry of bakers, prep cooks, line chefs, and small food <coughs> producers that make up this country. When refugees arrive in the US, they struggle to survive, and we fight to ensure that they thrive. <coughs> James Beard famously said, food is our common ground, a universal experience. That's the backbone of our work. So many of us have memories of cooking with our mothers and grandmothers, be they in small towns across the US or Caracas or even Aleppo. It's a visceral memory. Our hope is that Emma's torch can help serve as a reminder of our common humanity. We believe that the experience of cooking and sharing meals can build bridges between cultures. Our mission is to empower refugees, but also to use food to demonstrate the incredible value that they bring to their new communities because American food has always been comprised of a mix of flavors, spices, memories, and traditions. In every generation, waves of immigrants and refugees have added another serving to the American palate. One of my students was really shocked when I told him that not only did I want him to join our class, I wanted more. I wanted him to also teach us to make his grandmother's arepas. And all week, I would receive these text messages of how excited he was and how he was practicing and how he couldn't wait to show us to be both the student but also the teacher. He is an asylee who fled due to his sexual orientation, and it breaks my heart to think that for so long, he was being told what you do and who you are doesn't matter. Through food, we can show people that what you do and who you are does matter. Indeed, it matters most of all. We are living in these interesting times. Times like these afford us the opportunity to put our money, our resources, and our creativity where our mouths are. Emma's torch pays tribute to the fact that when Emma called on us to give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, the subject of her work wasn't refugees. It was America. Because of Emma's America, defining characteristic was its ability to welcome in the stranger. Emma was born into a life of luxury in the middle of the 19th century, at a time where as a woman, she was extremely limited in what she could do and what was expected of her. But as thousands of Eastern European refugees fled to the US, she fought to ensure that they had a better life. <clears throat> Emma too lived in interesting times, but she made her life more than interesting. She made it extraordinary. 150 years later, her words are a rallying cry. Just a few weeks ago, I gathered with my friends and thousands of others in Battery Park in the shadow of Emma's words to protest the refugee ban. It was just one week after we'd marched down Fifth Avenue in defense of women's rights. 
And it felt as though these previously lazy Sundays were turning into these moments for political activism. My favorite poster from the protest, though, just said, I miss brunch. And that struck with me. <laughs> I miss brunch too, right? Brunch is awesome. Brunch is great. It's also a source of livelihood for a lot of great cities. And what was interesting is that we were experiencing this moment where it felt like, in some ways, protest was the new brunch. But actually, I think what that sign overlooked is that brunch, in and of itself, can serve as an act of protest. We don't need to just be protest and active outside of our day jobs. We in the food community can use our professions, our creativity, and our kitchens to drive change. When we train refugees, we offer them access to a job market that was previously closed, and we show them that what they bring to the table matters. <coughs> but when we hire refugees, we enrich our restaurants and food businesses, we bring much needed diversity to our kitchens, and we add a key ingredient to the American melting pot. Last month, the Day Without Immigrants created a stir throughout the country, as both here in Philly and across the nation, restaurants shuttered their doors in protest. But it's too easy to just look at those singular days and singular marches as these frozen <coughs> moments of change. They're important and they are necessary. But we also need to not only have the day without immigrants, but the day, weeks, and months with immigrants. We need to showcase the benefits that all these people bring to our kitchens before days without them become a reality. We are living in interesting <coughs> times, but we can and we must have a major impact. My work with Emma's Torch focuses on pr hiring practices in the kitchen, but that's not the only way in which the food community can help further the fight for social justice. So many others fight to ensure that no child goes to sleep hungry, that parents can afford to feed their, their children healthy meals, and that our agricultural practices benefit both the farmer and the planet. There are so many ways in which the food industry's business decisions can actually further social justice work. You don't need to be a Washington DC lobbyist to impact change. In fact, you have far more power. You control what people eat. You control how you stock your inventory, and you control who you hire and how you compensate them. We live the change we wanna see in the world, and your food businesses are a microcosm of progress. There are worlds in which memories and cultures can be shaped and transmitted. You do more than fill bellies, you fill communities. So I urge you to use this power to impact change in the weeks and months and years ahead. Thank you.